Finally, my last reasonable doubt card is blank because I've tried my hardest to come up with all the reasonable doubts the defense sees in this case. And like I said, each of you need only one to vote Mrs. Crumbly not guilty. But a lot of times jurors think of a reasonable doubt I miss because there's so much evidence. And we've already established and I've admitted I'm not a perfect person and not a perfect lawyer. So I put a blank card before you so that if you have a doubt I've missed, you know you're not limited to what I've suggested or the defense has suggested. You're welcome to come up with your own doubts on your own. And if you decide you want to dive in and read the truth between Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly and everything they talk about, you're totally more than welcome to. Those exhibits are all going back with you. And what I'll tell you is that you're going to find a lot of instances where Mrs. Crumbly is anxious, asking where her son is, where her husband is. You're going to see a lot, lot of horse talk. You're going to see arguments between a married couple. When I read them, I, they read just like my husband and myself, um, yelling and swearing at each other at times. And then the next message says, hey, what do you want for dinner? And then we just move on, and that's just how life is. Um, you'll see messages in here that will certainly make you blush when you read what Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly intend to do in bed that night. You will read a variety of messages that show real life and real life between two married people that have a child. And it should make no difference that they may use their horse's name more often than their son's. And I'd also submit that every time you see them talk about when is he going to be home and what are we going to eat for dinner, even if they don't use the words spelled E-T-H-A-N, that's who they're talking about because there are only three of them in that house. At this point in the trial, I am asking that you find Jennifer Crumbly not guilty, not just for Jennifer Crumbly, but for every mother who's out there doing the best they can, who could easily be in her shoes, for every parent doing the best they can, who could easily be in their shoes, for every parent that has snippets of text messages that could be read and make them look like horrible monsters. For every parent that has fights with their kid on text message that also could make them look like <coughs> terrible parents. For every parent that's ever had a hobby and has not spent 24 seven with their child. That should not be held against parents. For any parent that's ever had an affair or spent time communicating on an affair, that says nothing about how much you care about your child or your expectation of whether or not they would commit a school shooting. Most people who have affairs would still not expect their child would do this. I do wish more than anything, this case could bring justice to the victims of the shooting, the victims of the terrorism that took place that day, and the victims of their families. I wish more than anything it really could be a result that would be a band-aid to make everyone feel better, but it can't be. First of all, it brings back nothing for the people who have lost. It certainly doesn't bring back any lives. And if anything, this is not justice. This is not how justice works. This case does nothing for the people who have already lost everything. Many of those people sitting in these, many of the people sitting in this courtroom. And it does nothing to bring back the tragedy and the tragedy that unfolded on November 30th. At this point in time, the prosecution cannot prove that Mrs. Crumbly avoided exercising ordinary care that would have saved lives. The prosecution cannot prove that Mrs. Crumbly was aware there was a danger that existed by her son that required her to exercise reasonable care. They cannot prove that she was grossly negligent and that there was any way she could foresee that this would happen as awful 
as it is, and we all stipulate it is. At this point in trial, I always have to sit down, this is how the court rules work. Prosecution gives a closing, I give a closing, they have an opportunity for rebuttal, and then I don't get to say anything else. And I'm sure you can see from my demeanor in trial, when the prosecution says something that I know I have an argument against, I get anxious, I, you can see a reaction, and I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna tell you that as they argue, I will have many things that I wish I could get up and say, that's not true and argue again. So what I would ask is that when you go back in the jury room and begin to deliberate, you think about and ask yourselves, what would Shannon Smith have said in response to the rebuttal where they get the last word? I would just ask that you consider that in your deliberations, because I guarantee you I'll have a very hard time sitting here knowing that the prosecution gets the last word when I know the defense would disagree with it. And I am asking <coughs> each of you to vote that Mrs. Crumbly is not guilty because she is not guilty and because a not guilty verdict is the only fair and just result in this case. Thank you.